the first generation of the scholars in the West were more uh, successful. This made the work of the second generation of scholars more difficult. And it made it difficult for people to trust the new scholars that are coming and trying to work in the community. Correct or wrong? Again, I'm not here to blame the previous generation of the scholars. I hope all of them have the correct intention and worked hard for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the best of their ability. And it's wrong to generalize <clears throat> as all the good things that we have, truly all the good things that we have from a religious aspect in the West comes from the active scholars that worked in our community in the pre from the previous generation. Now the first generation of the scholars, some of them were very active and they did a lot for the Shia and for the Muslims in, in, in the West. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them or bless their souls if they, are, if they, if they die. That's the truth. So we're not here to generalize and say all of them are bad. No, no. But the big amount of them, or a lot of them, they failed in being scholars in the West. And we can't blame them. They are coming to a new environment. Most of them are immigrants that moved to a new country, right? So we can't blame them. Yeah? It's like, hella, now if they take us to, I don't know, a different planet, for example, and they chuck you there with aliens, how would you deal with them? You don't speak their language. You don't know how they live. You don't know anything about them. True? You don't know anything about them. Same thing. Same thing. Um, the second generation of Shia scholars in the West have a struggle to prove themselves and remove any doubt that the community might have towards them before they even start doing anything. This makes it hard for people to connect to them. And it makes it hard for them to achieve anything in the outside. So, sorry, I'll, yes. you know you're saying you're the first generation of scholars. Um, with respect to them, they the ones who they're the ones who laid down that foundation for us to stand on. For the for the Shia, for the Sunnis, whoever it is, those first scholars are the ones who established the home base, who yeah. established that groundwork for for for. The difference between the first generation and the second generation is the first generation is still holding on to what they established. Yeah, correct. So, so what, what what they've done is no one can say that they've done, you know, anything short than spectacular. What was coming from a different country, like you said, doesn't speak the language, mm -hmm. no, without money, without all of these things, and then they established something. It's it's unbelievable. Work. Yes, uh, and uh, with the help of the people, obviously, what they achieved was amazing, yes. and it was to the best of their ability. But, uh, due to the internal problems that happen in most of the Western communities, I'm not speaking about a certain country, Allah Khalil, so it doesn't end up uh, causing me problems. No, no, in general in the, in the West, right? In general in the West, you find internal problems. Fighting for power, scholars fighting for centers, centers kicking scholars out, Bani Umayya and Banu al-Abbas Yeah, it's straightforward If there's a mic, I'll drop it now Bani Umayya and Banu al-Abbas When it comes to that stuff True or not? That caused people To take a negative stance Against any any scholar that comes Any scholar Allah enter you go as a scholar You ask for You say, I have a project And I need help They tell you, piss off <laughs> In a respectful way We tried a lot We helped a lot of scholars we paid a lot of money, they never listened to us, they want to be dictators, and so on. True or not? So, it's hard. It's hard for the second generation of Shia scholars in the West, especially if they are trying to blend in and do something in the community.